With handling money come several significant measures to prevent illegal activity. Money laundering refers to the movement of large sums of money between borders or between the underground and legitimate economy. Anti-money laundering laws aim to prevent these kinds of activities by ensuring every financial intermediary is aware of the sources and destination's legitimacy. You may be able to tell quickly why cryptocurrencies can cause issues. Blockchains not only circumvent centralized control, but often contain protocols to obfuscate transaction and user information, with Zcash currently at the height of this. In the United States, both the SEC and the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network serve to enforce these laws, placing restrictions upon the types of activities that can be considered legitimate. The exchanges which are under a compliance of AML include Coinbase, Kraken, and Bitstamp. A good number of exchanges are not compliant given that a good amount of the blockchain community diverges from regulation as much as possible. Know your customer regulations are another kind of regulation imposed upon financial institutions to prevent knowingly or unknowingly enabling illegal behavior. For these reasons, KYC requires three things. First, these businesses must identify and authenticate clients. This is why you're required to submit great swaths of personal information to any bank with which you open an account. This allows banks to confirm that you are who you say you are when transferring and claiming money. Additionally, it allows banks to associate activity with a particular individual or entity when noticing red flags, possibly leading to further investigation. Second, they are required to evaluate the risk of a client. Each client may be holding and transferring to various entities different quantities of money, some of which may not be legitimate. It is the responsibility of the institution to determine beforehand whether the clients might represent a risk. Finally, the institution must constantly watch for any indicators of criminal activity. Often, a company will be forced to cut off business with a client who may be behaving suspiciously for protection's sake. All these regulations are placed upon certain businesses to prevent any kind of financial circumvention around restrictions. However, because of blockchain's decentralized nature, integrating these qualities into businesses is socially difficult, though exchanges like Coinbase will comply with these regulations in order to be able to serve audiences as large as possible. Entities which deal with money transfer services or payment instruments are known as money transmitters. To designate which entities are legally allowed to engage in such activities, there exists the money transmitter license issued by states within the U.S. government. The process of achieving an MLT is sometimes known as a financial colonoscopy due to the depth of the application process. Some of the things that the New York Department of Financial Services has done before giving a license to a bank include, but are not limited to, auditing financial statements of the applicant's business or any subsidiaries, investigating the personal financial records of directors, owners, and others, seeing a list of all lawsuits filed against any control person in the last 15 years, and performing third-party criminal and civil background checks. This depth of regulation is meant to protect consumers from businesses mishandling their money, but it consequently makes performing these services enormously difficult. If that weren't enough, New York has a separate license exclusively for cryptocurrencies, which apply to anyone performing any one of the five acts. Receiving virtual currency for transmission or transmitting it, holding virtual currency for others, buying and selling virtual currency as a customer business, providing exchange services as a customer business, and controlling, administering, or issuing a virtual currency. An exchange known as Circle was the first to obtain a bit license. Coinbase also followed later, and Square is the most recent company to obtain a bit license, being the ninth. For a bit more perspective, let's delve into some regulatory history. In 2013, the Winklevoss twins, founder of the Gemini Exchange and well known for their involvement with the founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, during their undergraduate study at Harvard, submitted a proposal to the SEC to produce a Bitcoin ETF, or exchange traded fund, known as the Winklevoss Bitcoin Trust. An ETF would allow anyone to buy and sell a representation of Bitcoin without having to hold on to Bitcoins themselves. This proposal was rejected by the SEC in 2017, citing Bitcoin as unregulated and not consistent with the Exchange Act. A good deal of the blame was also put on poorly capitalized and unregulated exchanges outside the US, with a particular influence from the Chinese on the price. One might say this rejection is not entirely bad. After all, the entire purpose of Bitcoin is to be beyond regulation. This ruling confirms that. This slide demonstrates key arguments against proposed ETFs and mutual funds intended for cryptocurrencies. Citing investor risk from extreme volatility, lack of liquidity, and potential market manipulation, the SEC director as of January 2018, Daria Blass, says that the SEC does not believe that it is appropriate 
for fund sponsors to initiate registration of funds that intend to invest substantially in cryptocurrency. Until Bitcoin receives a reputation for low-risk investments, if it ever will, it's unlikely to reach widespread acceptance by the U.S. government as an underlying asset for financial products. Now that we've given some examples of regulations about cryptocurrencies, let's dive into some perspectives that can be offered by states within the U.S. Two states which have created pro-blockchain legislation include Arizona and Vermont. In Arizona, a bill was signed which allows blockchain digital signatures to be considered legal signatures. This implies that smart contracts are enforceable through the power of the government in Arizona. Additionally, in Vermont, information on the blockchain is considered representative of real facts and evidence permissible in court, as long as it satisfies a few conditions. This includes the date and time the information entered the blockchain, as well as whether the record was made by a regularly conducted activity as a regular practice, which can be interpreted to mean that a body with no trust is executing this record as it would any other record, implying no bias in the inclusion nor state of the record into the blockchain. For example, should it be legal for me to start my own private blockchain and include a single transaction then claim it as evidence within a court of law? Probably not. It's fascinating to think that technology just reaching a decade in age has already become powerful and popular enough to make its way into legislation. To put cryptocurrencies and blockchain further into perspective, let's take a look around the world at some of the popular responses to this new technology. Though Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies may be seen as a threat to established institutions, London particularly looks to give a more positive embrace to Bitcoin, seeing the technology as progress for finance rather than buying into fear that it will circumvent centralized systems. Switzerland, already well known for its crypto valley in the city of Zug, has looked into development of a new type of banks called crypto banks, physical locations to do with your crypto what you typically do with your fiat money. This would redefine cryptocurrency startup perception along with how banks go about handling these cryptocurrencies. The South African Reserve Bank, or SARB, established a fintech task force to monitor developments in the cryptocurrency and fintech space, attempting to balance cryptocurrency and blockchain development within the nation. Though it has expressed that cryptocurrencies are unlikely to be considered currencies, the population is free to trade and use them as they would any other asset. The SARB even launched a project of their own in June 2018, known as Project COCA, built using JP Morgan's Quorum to upgrade the South Africa payment network and provide more insight into transactions occurring between institutions. Taiwan recently integrated a fintech regulatory sandbox into their legislation, implying that even blockchain technology can be developed by startups without fear of regulatory consequences. Taiwan is popularly coined Crypto Island, with Jason Shu known as the Crypto Congressman, coined by Vitalik Buterin himself. However, not all countries are as embracing of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Here are a few examples of countries pushing against cryptocurrencies and blockchain. In Bangladesh, it's claimed that a lack of regulation by a central bank makes cryptocurrencies dangerous. While they're not exactly wrong about the risk of cryptocurrencies to unknowing investors, they certainly punish beyond what many might say is a reasonable amount, threatening up to 12 years in prison for trading cryptocurrencies. In Bolivia, the central bank issued a statement that it's illegal to use a non-government currency. In China, bans have been placed on practically all cryptocurrency and ICO-related activities. In Ecuador, restrictions have been placed on virtual currencies as well, primarily as a way to protect the national digital currency, the first state-sponsored one in history. Iceland claims that purchasing and transferring digital currencies goes against the national restriction against currency leaving the country, essentially banning cryptocurrencies. India shut down an exchange known as BTC X India, which, despite complying with AML KYC regulations, was still deemed risky. Russia interprets cryptocurrencies as being dangerous towards the national currency, hence weakening banks and governments. In Sweden, cryptocurrencies cannot be used specifically to buy scrap metal or other waste products, a surprisingly popular thing to buy in Sweden. In Thailand, cryptocurrencies are labeled illegal due to the lack of regulations, but restrictions are not currently stringently enforced. In Vietnam, cryptocurrencies are banned from use by credit institutions, citing their use for illegal activities and their high investment risk. 